हेलो फ्रेंड्स कंटिन्यूंग विद द चैप्टर एपिडेमियोलॉजी इन सब्जेक्ट हेल्थ एजुकेशन एंड कम्युनिटी फार्मेसी द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक टुडे वी विल डिस्कस इज इम्यूनिटी नाउ दिस इज अनदर इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन विच वी मस्ट नो डेफिनेशन क्लासिफिकेशन देन डिफ्रेंशिएट डिफरेंस बिटवीन एक्टिव इम्यूनिटी पैसिव इम्यूनिटी एज इन इट एंड वेरियस द प्रिपरेशंस विच आर यूजफुल इन डेवलपिंग इम्यूनिटी सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स टूडे वी विल कवर इन दिस लेक्चर नाउ द डेफिनेशन फॉर इम्यूनिटी टर्म इज द वे इन विच द बॉडी कैन प्रोटेक्ट इट सेल्फ फ्रॉम इन्वेजन बाय पैथोजेनिक माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड प्रोवाइड a defense against their harmful effect so this is one definition another definition we can say that immunity is the power of the body to resist effects of attack of pathogenic microorganisms that is the immunity isn't it now whatever the diseases or infections that are caused in human beings that is only because of the lack of immunity isn't it and due to which when the immunity is weak the microorganisms succeed in attacking the individual isn't it so therefore the preparations are used many preparations which are useful in developing immunity isn't it so we know now about the immunity that is it is a power of body to resist effect of pathogenic microbes isn't it and opposite to that when the person is not having immunity so that is lack of power of body to resist infection and that is called susceptibility means the person is weak so this is definition of immunity now the another slide which shows the various uh, factors or we can say the agents which they attack the body of the person and they uh, result in the infection isn't it and as we have seen now as i said that the basic cause of disease in human beings is the attack of pathogenic microorganism and this attack is possible in those individuals where there is lack of immunity isn't it so here also the definition is repeated the power of body to resist effects of invasion of microorganisms isn't it and lack of power lack of such ability is called susceptibility and these are the various microorganisms microbial agents which are responsible for uh, infection now we must know the types of immunity isn't it and there are two major types isn't it here as the slide shows so there is natural immunity that is also called non specific or native immunity and other is acquired immunity that can be called specific or adaptive immunity so these are different names which are used and actually there are two major types natural and acquired hasn't it so different names also we have seen hasn't it now this can be further divided based on cellular and humoral responses isn't it now the natural immunity further can be due to the species the race the individual and age also so age age wise also the immunity in individual gets developed now acquired immunity this may be artificial isn't it that is it may be active or passive isn't it so again this slide shows the two main types of immunity non specific and specific that is the natural and uh, acquired 
हजंट नाउ नॉन स्पेसिफिक इट इज हैविंग इमीजिएट ऑनसेट इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड इननेट इम्यूनिटी हजंट and then specific which is acquired one it has delayed onset hasn't it so just classification is important you must be able to write down classification no need to go in detail then next important question which is asked hasn't it is about the difference between active immunity and passive immunity isn't it so we have seen classification of immunity that is the natural and acquired and in acquired there is active and passive isn't it now active immunity this is produced by host immune system isn't it active immunity and passive immunity is received passively isn't it there is no active participation of the uh, individual isn't it then the other difference is that active immunity is induced by infection or by immunogens isn't it or immunoglobulins we can say whereas the passive immunity that is received by administration of ready made antibodies isn't it the active immunity is long acting and it has got effective protection the passive immunity it is for short period and it is less effective then the other differences that active immunity it is effective only after lag period isn't it that means there is production of antibodies generation of antibodies isn't it whereas passive immunity it is we can say most of these preparations they are ready made antibodies so they are administered and there is immediate immunity then other differences immunological memory present in case of active immunity whereas that is not present in case of passive immunity then booster effect on subsequent dose whereas in case of passive immunity subsequent dose that is less effective isn't it then negative phase may occur in case of active immunity whereas there is no negative phase in case of passive immunity whereas the other main important difference between active immunity and passive immunity is that this active immunity is not possible or it is not applicable in the persons who are immunodeficient isn't it whereas the passive immunity can be provided can be given it is applicable in the persons who are immune immunodeficient who are having weak immune power isn't it so we can take in another words also that the individuals where immune power is strong their active immunity can be given isn't it okay but if they are uh, immune immunity point of view if they are weak if they are susceptible so active immunity cannot be generated in those individuals whereas the passive immunity is provided to immunodeficient persons
so this is about the main uh, difference between active immunity and passive immunity then continuing with this topic only the immunology we must know isn't it so the meaning of immunology is it is a branch of science which deals with study of immunity and preparations used to produce immunity isn't it so immunology is nothing but the study of immunity whereas the preparations that provide immunity are called immunological preparations or immunological products now these immunological products are biological preparations we can say isn't it these are biological preparations which are given by parenteral route only isn't it by injection isn't it to avoid inactivation of preparation isn't it on oral administration isn't it now these preparations they are mean for prevention of diseases isn't it then treatment of diseases okay so for prevent of disease for prevention purpose vaccines can be used for treatment purpose anti toxin preparations anti serum preparations can be given for diagnostic purposes bacterial toxins can be given isn't it now almost all immunological preparations are administered by parenteral route isn't it the only exception is polio myelitis vaccine opv vaccine which is administered by oral route isn't it this is due to the fact that immunological preparations become inactive when administered by oral route now the storage of these immunological products is also very important isn't it immunological products lose their potency on storage isn't it so the temperature factor is very important and they are to be preserved very very carefully isn't it the preservation of uh, potency of these preparations involves maintaining the viability of living cells preventing the denaturation of proteins or antigens that is antigens or antibodies isn't it then the reduction in potency reduction in power of these in, uh, preparations is due to chemical changes isn't it which can take place due to temperature factor on storage now all immunological products are required to be stored below room temperature isn't it so it is desirable that all immunological products should be stored in refrigerator to ensure reasonable life the majority of these preparations isn't it vaccines toxoids anti toxins they are to be stored in dark place and that means the light is also prevented and temperature between 2 to 8 degree centigrade the viral vaccines like smallpox opv vaccine they are more stable below their freezing point the bacterial vaccines and anti toxins get spoiled deteriorated if they are allowed to freeze so temperature factor depending upon the type of vaccine it is very very important now the required storage conditions are always mentioned on label which is fixed on the container of these immunological products to maintain potency of these products these instructions must be strictly followed now apart from temperature light is also very important factor in presence of light many preparations including these vaccines they may get decompose hasn't it so they must be protected from light the light resistant glass containers are not recommended for storage of immunological products because in that case it becomes difficult to detect the changes in the product hasn't it 
now some of the important uh, immunological products you must know isn't it we will see the classification there are three types of these immunological products isn't it three categories are there the first one is the immunological products for active immunization which will impart active immunity isn't it so these are bacterial vaccines these are viral and rickettsial vaccines and toxoids isn't it so first category is the preparations which provide active immunity the other category is immunological products for passive immunization it includes preparations containing anti toxins and anti serum to produce passive immunity in human beings isn't it and the third category is of the immunological products which are used for diagnostic purposes which are used for detection which are used for uh, finding out some any disease or any other uh, thing isn't it so these preparations containing toxins or preparations used for tuberculin and chick test isn't it so many tests are there which are used to find out the infection isn't it to detect the infection for that these immunological products are used as diagnostic agents so again this chart also will be helpful for you which gives examples of uh, immunological products of all these three categories as we have discussed the first category is the preparations which provide active immunization isn't it and these are the preparations which uh, impart active immunity isn't it so that include bacterial vaccines isn't it rickettsial vaccines isn't it then the second category the products which provide passive immunization passive immunity isn't it so uh, anti serum preparations anti toxins they are helpful for imparting passive immunity the third category of these products is of diagnostic agents isn't it so most of the diagnostic agents are there isn't it antibacterial serum isn't it or uh, immune blood derivatives are there which are used as a diagnostic aid isn't it so these are some of the examples of these preparations now next important uh, part again related with uh, immunization only is uh, question is also asked on the national immunization schedule in which we must know the various preparations various uh, vaccines which are given to the children to protect them from various diseases now immunization is a process of protecting individual from disease through introduction of live attenuated killed or organisms or antibodies in the individual system so whatever these vaccines are there they are prepared from a cell culture isn't it of that particular strain only either it may be uh, bacteria or it may be virus any organism isn't it so either it may be live attenuated or it can be in killed isn't it or antibodies can be developed isn't it so immunization is a process of imparting immunity isn't it to the individuals by giving these preparations parenterally isn't it so this is a process of protecting individual by active or passive method isn't it and these immunizing agents we have discussed in the previous slide these may be vaccines sera preparations immunoglobulin preparations isn't it now universal immunization program is there isn't it and each and every country has got its own immunization schedule for their 
children's isn't it now in 1974 the expanded program of immunization was organized by world health organization isn't it why this was called expanded because adding more disease controlling antigens of vaccination schedule isn't it and extending coverage to all corners of country isn't it now again the name of this uh, program was changed in 1985 and then instead of expanded program of immunization it was called universal immunization program or it is also called universal immunization schedule isn't it so universal immunization is therefore best interpreted as implying the ideal that no child should be denied immunization against six killer diseases that we have already discussed in detail in communicable diseases isn't it? these are tuberculosis diphtheria whooping cough tetanus polio and measles and till now in our country the government uh, hospitals they are engaged in providing active vaccination to all children against protection of these six killer diseases. Now, uh, apart from these six killer diseases regarding uh, schedule also I will let you know the immunization schedule that is followed in our country and as I said this, this immunization schedule includes the uh, vaccines which provide protection from these six killer diseases also isn't it so you can refer textbook also and in textbook national immunization schedule is given and the question is asked on uh, this national immunization schedule also so by making uh, at least uh, three columns isn't it you can write down this whole immunization schedule isn't it starting from the pregnant woman who are vaccinated by two doses of tetanus toxoid isn't it then the children within one month we know that the first vaccine that is given to the child within one month is bcg vaccine isn't it so bcg vaccine is given in uh, within 15 days of one month isn't it then uh, at the age of one and a half month to three and a half month three doses of dpt vaccine by intramuscular route and three doses of polio oral vaccine by oral route they are to be given wasn't it then it, at the age of nine months measles vaccine is to be given in a single dose by subcutaneous route wasn't it then when the child is of uh, one and a half to two years 18 to 24 months the first booster dose of dpt vaccine is given along with the oral polio vaccine by oral route then at the age of five years the second booster dose of dt is given by intramuscular route hasn't it then in uh, private hospitals the vaccine for typhoid also can be given isn't it so when the child is of five years we can say isn't it then on the same time in private hospitals the vaccine is given for protection of hepatitis b also at the age of uh, one month first dose then the second dose at the age of two months and the third dose when the child is of six months so this is the immunization schedule and many times the question is asked on immunization schedule also then the important topic related to this immunization only is about the cold stain chain storage isn't it now this cold chain storage is needed for proper storage of vaccines isn't it now 
there are certain vaccines which are very sensitive to heat they are called thermolabile isn't it so their storage and transportation it is very difficult if they are losing their potency on temperature so to overcome this difficulty of storage and transportation cold chain storage is necessary isn't it now this cold chain storage is a system of keeping vaccines at low temperature and transported from manufacturer to actual vaccination site under low temperature for this purpose cold chain equipments are essential isn't it now in this slide you can see that how the vaccines are exposed to heat cold light and due to these three factors their effectiveness can be lost and once the effectiveness potency is lost that is irreversible isn't it they are useless so this is how you can see in the slide that uh, with the help of cold chain storage system only the vaccines can be properly transported from manufacturer to the actual vaccination site isn't it so this sequence you can see that how the uh, from manufacturer through various modes of transportation by air or by uh, state it may be by road or by any other mode isn't it? to the district store health center isn't it sub center and then final the outreach isn't it so for this purpose cold chain storage is very very important and for this various equipments are also used like cold box vaccine carrier flashes ice packs refrigerator freezer isn't it so these equipments are necessary isn't it for proper storage of these vaccines now this you can say see a freezer isn't it so this is walk in cold room isn't it at regional level isn't it deep freezer for making ice packs isn't it and storage of various vaccines including oral polio vaccine isn't it then ice lined refrigerators at primary health center level they are also very important isn't it so again i repeat that cold chain storage system is very important it plays important role and the vaccines till they uh, are given to the individuals till that they are properly stored isn't it at a required temperature and they are protected from the light also isn't it so just to make you again remind isn't it that all vaccines need proper storage isn't it we have seen about the cold chain storage also isn't it and these vaccines they may lose their potency their effectiveness if they are exposed to the temperature above 8 degree centigrade isn't it then some vaccines like hepatitis b tetanus toxoid then triple vaccine as you know that is dpt vaccine that may lose potency when exposed to freezing temperature isn't it some vaccines they are sensitive to light for example bcg measles isn't it so when they are not properly stored isn't it they may lose their potency as i said and the damage is irreversible once their potency is lost they are of no use isn't it they are just to be discarded and they are to be disposed isn't it so therefore very important is their storage at a proper temperature and protection from light isn't it
now also here it is very important to note that the physical appearance of the vaccine may remain unchanged isn't it physically we can see that the vaccine is good in appearance isn't it but the potency may get lost if they are not properly stored at the required temperature isn't it so that is very important okay so here the important part related to immunity immunological products immunization schedule cold chain storage system we have covered isn't it i hope you are finding these uh, uh, lectures beneficial isn't it and you are able to understand if you are not able to understand you take efforts to listen twice or thrice okay thank you